in the name of my ancestors. Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Reality Temple on Earth. Of course, I'm the gatekeeper of this internet ministry known as, and I am always seen on various internet media. You can find me on Daily Motion, Vimeo, MySpace, and make sure that you friend me under the name Sheshore Tenobeta on Facebook. I am known as the mighty, mm, mighty, mm, mighty, uh, Angus Snub Nub 7, or the Black Dragon, your brother, and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. Tonight, this morning, this evening, whenever you have a chance to view this video, the topic we've chosen at this moment in time, and I would like to invite Caucasian people to this video. Now, I've done this before, and the white folks didn't show up. They always want to show up in places where they were not invited. Why are you like that? What is wrong with you? If I don't want you in my house, you want to break it to my house. And then once you come into my house uninvited, then you want to be disrespectful, discourteous, uncivil, profane, violent behaving, then turn around and pretend like you're not violent, that, you, that you're not a savage, that you're goody two-shoes, but your behaviors show that you don't even have proper social skills. If you comment on a video and you were not invited, then the least you could do is be courteous. I don't care whether you agree with me or not. If you show common courtesy, then all is welcome upon the forum. The problem begins when we are discourteous because you don't like what somebody say. I can disagree with you, but I don't have to call you out of your name. I don't have to talk about your mama. I don't have to talk about how you dress or how you talk or how you write or any of those things. It is good that we communicate, but we are having problems in this nation due to lack of good communication skills because we have childish mentalities. You behave like you are children on the playground. I am sure kindergartners, 7th and 8th graders are not on these videos making comments. It is you who are at, who are at least 18 hold up, you behave like children. And unfortunately for those of this current generation, due to computers, these, this uh, internet, social media, we've lost the ability to have proper communication with other human beings. Because if you did this during the time when I'm growing up and many of Y'all with a little age on you can bear witness. If y'all behave the way that you do on the internet in person, there is no doubt you begin your ass whooped, if not killed, because you don't go around cussing people out and disrespecting folks. You do this because you can hide behind a picture on a computer. And I tell you, Somebody is going to be made an example because y'all going to mess with the wrong person with the technical savvy who is not in their right state of mind when you disrespect them, when you continue to do these idiotic 
childish, infantile things. They will hunt you down, find you, and it will be on the news, the first internet murder. I'm not going to call no police. I'm not going to call no FBI. I'm going to take it upon myself. I'm going to show this faceless nut that I ain't nothing to play with. You don't disrespect me in person and you don't disrespect me over the internet. I'm going to show you. It's just a matter of time. And y'all are so silly. Ah, this is the thing. Y'all are so silly. Even after somebody is killed because of this. Y'all will still do it until another person is hurt or killed. That's how silly you are. So, I don't know who's going to be the first example because I disagree with many people. But I don't go around cussing folks out. I do everything that I can to respect, be civil, and courteous to everyone because I have great intelligence. When you have Great intelligence, and that's something that some of y'all claim you have. There's no need to say, MF this, your mama is a B, suck my this. There's no need for all that. Stay on the topic. You do this because you make it a comment, and you are trying to have a conversation on a topic you have not really thought about. Because... Most of y'all are dope fiends. You drunks. The only thing you think about is getting high. Watching porn. Then after you get bored with watching porn. Getting drunk. Going to the baseball game. And all this other entertainment leisure crap. Then you want to come here and try to make a serious comment. Then the first intelligent person embarrasses you. Then, your mama, you stupid, you a fag, and, and all this other crazy stuff y'all come up with. So, when you come to this house, when you come to this ministry, you are in bad shape. Because, hopefully, what is coming forth from this temple is of great intelligence, and you don't have to agree, but... I want you to think for yourself. For yourself. For you. I don't need quotes from the Bible. I don't need quotes from the Quran. Or what the Republican Party say. Or what the President say. I want to know what you say. Deep down inside. But you cannot be yourself. Being a drunk. A dope fiend. Quoting all the baseball scores. All the football scores. Putting penises in your mouth. Acting silly and childish. You can't be. Have that type of mentality. Come into these videos. Then all of a sudden you want to try to. Be some kind of scholar like you know something. You don't know nothing. And that's why you are upset. That's why you hide your face. Because if you really. Knew what you was talking about. You be proud of it. Like I am proud of everything that I say. And if I could not defend my position. If I was not proud of what I say. Then maybe I would be like you. And hide behind a picture. I'm not ashamed of nothing I say. I'm very sure I am accurate. And on point And on time. And I will accept the challenge. Of any knowledge that's out there. But I cannot challenge your wisdom. Challenge your knowledge. When you want to. Name call. Get off the topic. Stay on the topic. Stay on point. This is not about my mama. This is not about my black shirt or my shade. This is about whatever the topic is. Stay on point. This is not about Africa. This is not about Europe. This is about the United States of America. That's what I'm talking about. I could care less about what happened 4,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago. I'm talking about the here and the now, our reality. Stay on topic. This is about you and me, not the dead. But I will 
talk about some of the past. Because the past, what happened in the past, created the situation that we are in in the, in the future or in our present time. And if we continue to act and behave like little children instead of so-called adults, when y'all go, going to grow up? Instead of being a Toys of us kid. You can't do nothing with me. With a childish mentality. I whoop children. I put children in their place. You don't talk when adults are talking. That's how you deal with children. Children have to respect adults. Those who have less intelligence. Not better than. I'm not better than anybody. But when you can clearly see. That. Your intelligence, your wisdom, your knowledge ain't on that level. Your best bet is to leave that person alone. Shut up, because I will. I don't talk about things I have no knowledge with. I've been dealing in this subject matter ever since I was nine years old. When y'all was watching cartoons, when some of y'all was still on your mama's breasts, been in this struggle. Dealing with this topic for a very, very long time. You just came out of the bar. You just came out of high school. Never dealing with this type of subject matter. But it affects your life every day. All of a sudden, you want to try to get serious. First, you got to learn what happened. You got to understand the situation, the origins of why we are where we are right now. Where we, where we are right now. Not what they did in Egypt 4,000 years ago or any of these other places. Y'all keep distracting the here and the now. Our reality. What happened 4,000 years ago is not our reality. And if it has nothing to do with the United States of America, has nothing to do with us. My problem began a little over 400 some years ago. When my ancestors, who they say came from Africa, what part of Africa, what people, we have no idea. But that's where my problem began when they were kidnapped, brought here, and been struggling ever since. And now the this racial issue is on the forefront because another one of us, the descendants of slaves in America, another one of our children dead on the street. And a murderer is allowed to walk free just like 400 years ago, just like 300 years ago, just like 200 years ago, just like 100 years ago, just like little less than 50 years ago. Ain't nothing changed except how the game is played. And you believe that these black people, you believe that we are so stupid because Oprah got a show, because Bill Cosby got a show, Michael Jordan can dunk a basketball, and all these people can make millions of dollars. You think that's supposed to fool us and make us believe that things have changed because so-and-so is married to a white woman, so-and-so is married to a black woman. Oh, we integrated. We integrated. But the black man and woman, the descendants of slaves in America, have no power. So it's cool with you the way things are, as long as Negroes stay in their place. And that's why you have a problem with brothers and sisters like myself. Because I'm tired. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of in this place. This position. When I pay taxes, we pay taxes. And have died in every war. But we don't get treated with respect. And we cannot exercise this fake citizenship that we're supposed to have been granted. And that's what it is, fake. That's not the topic, but then, in a way, it is the topic. Did I did 
I mention what the topic was. <laughs> Woo! The topic is that we've chosen for this conversation. And really, if you cannot be civil, if you cannot be courteous, if you are an idiot, why don't you do everybody a favor? Go back to the porn site whence ye came from. That's the best thing that you can do. Put a penis or vagina in your face. That's the best thing that you can do. You can't do nothing here except waste comment space. We've already wasted enough time. And if we are as, as intelligent as we claim we are, if we are so righteous, if we are so fair like we claim we are, then this issue of race really overnight can be, as they say in the law, quashed overnight. But see, some folks benefit from the way things are. They like feeling superior over somebody else. They like feeling they, like they are better than somebody else. You don't have to say it. Your actions. See, that's the thing. I don't care what you say out of your mouth. Your actions say you believe that you are better than me. And if you feel as though I believe I am better than you, then please make a video. Cut the excerpt out of the video because you don't know me personally. Cut the excerpt. Matter of fact, my challenge to all white folks or house Negroes and Sambos, those who say that I preach hate or any of, any of these other false accusations, make a video, show the quotes. Show me as this vicious black racist or whatever you want to call me. Show me. I want to see myself. Show me the man in the mirror. I can accept that. But don't lie on me. See, you have to lie. Don't tell a lie. If I, if I wanted to hate white people, I don't fear you. If I hated white people, I would outright say it. I said, I hate you. I don't feel that way. This issue is about justice. And it is about justice for those who have been who have been denied the longest. And me, my people, the descendants of slaves born in America, have been denied for 400 years. Given a little bit of some some. A little a little bit of, of some over here. A little, but we have not yet, after 400 years, being the first, remember, Christmas addicts, a black man was the first one to die in the Revolutionary War. Since that time, we have not been treated with justice. In fact, after Christmas addicts died in the Revolutionary War, when that war was over, they decided to enslave his people. That's how you pay somebody back for fighting for your freedom? Oh, and then in 2012, you still have that type of behavior and you wish to be trusted? Oh, come on now. You must really believe we are dang fools. I have to watch. I'm not really someone who uses profanity, but I want to try to just cut the ass and the dams. I just want to really cut that, cut that down. Because I want to be able for my words to be heard from the youngest to the oldest. And I don't and I don't need to speak sophisticated. I want to be able to talk where whether you did not graduate the first grade, all the way to all of y'all who think y'all got it going on because you got PhDs and BS's and, and all these other, which is wonderful. I want to be able to talk so everybody can understand very clearly what is being said so that you can't say, I did not understand. And I'm speaking the king's English. It may not be grammatically correct, 
but it is enough that you cannot say, I don't know what he talking about. Oh, you know. You just didn't like it. But you know. And we're going to talk about trusting white folks as we go along in the subject matter, which I really still have not... <laughs> I still have not told us what the topic is, but on the video, we already know what the topic is. The topic of this uh, video lecture is, should black people join white folks against the so-called New World Order, whatever that is? I don't know what it is. It's just talk. Some type of imaginary stuff. We're going we gonna to get into it. I know what, it's an imaginary. The new world order is not imaginary. Oh, yes it is. And I'm going to tell you why. In just a minute. For me. But we want to journey into the past just for a few minutes. And talk about the north and the South. And just for a few seconds, I want to try to defend the South. Oh, what? You're going to defend the South? Yeah, I want to defend the South. I want to give equality. I want to bring some justice. Why would you want to try to defend the South and the South had slaves and the South did this and the South done that. This is the reality. The reality of the situation is, and by the way, you have some uh, so-called black people. They don't like the Confederate flag. Oh, the Confederate flag represents slavery. I don't like the Confederate flag. <laughs> See, it's really hypocrisy. Or you just play ignorant. Slavery. Brothers and sisters, friends and associates and all those who are listening under the sound of my voice. Slavery in the United States. Now listen. Common sense, people. Slavery was legal. And who made it legal? Slavery was legal. How long was slavery legal? Slavery was created. Slavery was legal, legalized by the federal government. Yes or no? How long was it legalized? It was legalized for over 300 years. Who represented the federal government? I'm waiting. Do, 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 The federal government represented by what you call the North. <laughs> And the North legalized slavery for 300 years. Which gave the right to own slaves to those in the South. But now, just because the majority of the slaves were in the South, don't mean they all were owned by Southerners. There were people in the North that owned slaves. Y'all do know this, don't you? You do know that the whole country of America, north, south, east, west, the whole nation, in fact, all of Europe, listen to me, all of Europe benefit from free slave black labor. Either they were directly or indirectly involved in slavery. Just like we are. In 2012. Many of our clothes. Glasses. Many of the products 
that we get come from either free prison labor from some foreign country or either exploited labor from foreign some foreign country. And let me tell y'all, whether you know it or not, they are using people in jails and prisons and mental institutions, paying them under the minimum wage to make products and do things. So you say that slavery only exists in the Sudan, some places in Africa somewhere, you have forms of slavery right here. And if you work a nine to five job, you are a slave. Bottom line, you just a different kind of slave. You feel I'm earning my money. You're not getting nothing compared to what your massa is making. You getting pennies while your massa, whoever you work for, got it going on. I bet you don't vacation where your boss, the people that own the corporation, wherever you work, I bet you don't vacation where they go. I bet you don't know the people they know. Y'all talk about Oprah, Bill Cosby, and Beyonce. These people in these large corporations, some of y'all work for, they know Oprah personally. They know Beyonce personally because they got money. They go, they go to the same type of hotels and whatever. And they can also afford them high ticket prices to go see these people. While you, the slave, all oh, see, we all on the same page. See, we all on the same page. But you got to get on the same page with us. You can't, I'm talking to white folks. Ladies and gentlemen, with all due respect, I'm talking to white people. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I'm talking to Caucasian ladies and gentlemen. So don't try to say that I'm being disrespectful. We're having a conversation. We're talking. But see, you need to come and get on our page. We have been on your page for 400 years. And it has gotten us nowhere. You claim you want to work with us. Then you come our way. And you follow our charge. But see you can't do that. Because you still have a slave master mentality. You want to run things. I want to do this. You still think that I'm your slave. No, no, no. Caucasian gentlemen. Caucasian lady. Y'all got it all tw twisted. We don't need you. We just struggling all by ourselves just nicely. I don't need you. You want to unite with us. Then you prove it. Then you stop being so arrogant and all high and mighty. We're going to talk about that too. But we're still in the north and the south. So you a hypocrite. Black man, you a hypocrite. Black woman to be patriotic to America, but you don't like the Confederacy, you don't like the South, you don't like the Confederate flag. Where do you think the Confederate flag came from? It came from out of, and was born up out of, that which was made legal by the federal government. Talk to me, bring it on. You can't mess with me. I think too fast, think too quick. I think for myself, you ain't slick. You ain't think it was nothing. So how can you dislike the Confederate flag when the American flag itself, that's what created and that's what caused your problem to begin with. The United States, the original, don't trade on me, the original flag that you patriotic. God bless America. Which hand is it that you... I don't know because I'm not patriotic to a country that raped my grandmothers, castrated my fathers, torn feathered my people, lynched us wholesale, allowed killers to kill our children in Sanford, Florida, and let the murder run free. I'm not going to be loyal to that. 
You can. I'm not. And I'm not going to suggest nobody around me to do that. None of my people. So y'all hypocrites and you fakes. If you don't like the Confederacy, if you don't like the Confederate flag, how is it possible that you love the American flag itself when the American flag, this nation was born, it was built on slavery. It was built on the genocide of Native American people and Mexican brown people, dark people in general, the exploitation of dark people all over the planet. And in our ignorance, and because these black folks were slaves, we helped kill Native American people. We helped kill other dark people around the earth. And even white folks that they didn't like. We helped kill. But we did not do that on our own. We did it out of our ignorance, just like you would make your dog bite somebody. That dog know you ain't did nothing to him, but Master say, that's my enemy. Go sick him, Spot. Go sick him, Spot. And that's how we are. These house Negroes and Sambos, handkerchief head Negroes, go sick him, Spot. Sick them Negroes that's standing up for Trayvon Martin. Go sick them, Spot. Oh, yeah. And there's some good. The story didn't even get going good. And there go the house Negroes, the Sambos, the handkerchief heads. There they go. Sick them, Spot. They always sit a black face out there. Because if they sit a black face out there, it gives their... It gives their, their uh, unjust view. It's supposed to give it credibility. It does not give your unjust view credibility. It just shows that you still have some slaves. That's all that it shows. And they are still loyal to you. Because you have them brainwashing the seed in this fantasy world of diversity. And where are they at? They're on the bottom taking orders. Following you, sniffing you in your backside like the dog they are. Like the pet they are. Oh yeah, I got to I gotta describe it just how it is. They act like a pet. And you don't like me. And you don't like many other brothers and sisters that talk like me. Because I'm not your dog. I'm not your pet. You will treat me like a man. Or you won't deal with me at all. Get out of my face. Move on. You can't trick me. The days of you smiling in black folks face. And stabbing us in the back is over. The north and the south are the same. There is no difference. The honorable... Brother Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Moved to Chicago, Illinois. He thought because of his seeming, seemingly looked like it was success in the South. The illusion of success. He thought that he could take and bring that illusion to the north and move to Chicago, Illinois. <laughs> oh, the people in the north are different from the people in the south. That's what I have been told. But when Dr. King moved to Chicago, and began to march and use the same methods that he used in the South. The white people, the white racist Caucasian people of Chicago, of the North. Dr. King said, I've never, I've seen all kinds of horror, all kinds of hate in the South, but I've never seen nothing on this magnitude. 
when Dr. King was in Chicago marching, they were all in trees throwing bottles and shouting and just filled with a hatred that he did not even feel in the South. What does that tell you? They are all the same. There is no difference. When you talk about Republicans and Democrats, they are all the same. You think they are different. They are all the same. Go to the same parties. Know the same people. Do the same things. You think, oh, the Republicans, Democrats, they are different. They are all the same. Same agendas, same mentality, the same. And if they have a different mentality, they run them out of the Democratic Party. They run them out of the Republican Party. Because if you are a sincere person, you cannot work within corruption. So I'm telling you that the Democrats and Republicans or everybody in the Supreme Court and all these places, all of them are corrupt. And if they went in sincere with a pure heart, they're not going to come out that way. All these people, and I'm not going by what they say. Look at the actions. Why aren't you seeing the change? It's the same corruption. Because they are corrupted. Your government, Caucasian ladies and gentlemen, your government is corrupt. Well, see, we are on the same page. See, stay with me. We are on the same page. But you're going to have to respect black folks. You got to respect our intelligence. You got to respect our wisdom. We've been doing this a long time. You are new. You are just realizing that your government is all messed up. You don't know how to really deal with them. Leave it up to the experts. You come help us. We know what we're talking about. Been dealing with them for a long time. But you too arrogant to follow behind a black face. Because see, deep down inside, you talk all that Love everybody's stuff, but you are racist at heart. Yes, you are. Either directly, which I don't think that's what you are directly, but indirectly, see, what you don't understand is that throughout the generations, you as a white person, you have been programmed to have a slave master mentality. You cannot stand for a black man to tell you what and what not to do. Oh, wait a minute, hold up. Hold up that guy. Uh-uh. We have a black president. You have a black president. That's your puppet. You have a black president that has a cabinet that is filled with Clinton administration has been. The Obama administration is more white I believe than George Bush and Clinton administration. That's your puppet. He does what you want him to do. He's not somebody like me. Oh no, please. Lord knows we don't want him like you. <laughs> Lord knows. So you have a slave master mentality. As long as you run the show. You're not going to run this show. So your best bet. Is to move on. And I wish you the best of luck. Because you have a different agenda. There's something in your agenda. You're not telling us. And I don't want to know. Because I'm not going to be falling behind you. We have followed. Caucasian people. Trusted Caucasian people. For 400 years. And we are still marching. We're still complaining, still doing the same thing generation after generation. The buck has to stop somewhere. It needs to stop now. We should be sick of passing this foolishness. And that's what it is. This foolishness to our babies. I'm not your slave. And if you do not want to treat me like a real citizen, 
then it is best that we separate. Not because you hate me or I hate you. We cannot get along. Because you want to do, you have, you want to do, you want to live in the house this way and we need to live in the house another way. So it is best, it is in our both best interest that we separate. Now, during the civil rights movement, there were Caucasian men and women who did not talk like y'all do. And I will say that again. They did not talk like y'all do. There were Caucasian people, including some Caucasian Jews, who were harassed and mistreated and some of them were even killed. Very few. So don't so don't get on your pedestal like a whole lot of white folks was part of the civil rights movement because it was not. Very, very few. Small portion that did not talk but actually took action and some of them lost their lives. So I'm going to have to respect them. I am. I'm not going to say that's why when you talk about I said all white people do this, all white people do that, you are a liar. Because I have no choice but to respect those who try to do something while y'all talk. What have you done for black folks lately? All y'all people talk about, oh, the black folks, we need to unite uh, and against the new world order and all that. What have you, what do you do for black people? Nothing except run your mouth. I don't see you in, our, in, in my neighborhood, nowhere. Not, not even running your mouth. You get behind a computer, tapity tap tap, tapity tap tap. Running your mouth. Move on. Get behind me, Satan. That's all you are to me. A deceiver. Going back to slavery, just for a few seconds, there were white folks called abolitionists. And these abolitionists, if it was not for their help, Harriet Tubman could not have been successful. She did not have the connection. She could not have pulled off the Underground Railroad without Caucasian people helping her. People like John Brown. I don't know about other black folks because they are so filled and so sick of what white folks have done. And so they put all the white folks in, a, in the same category. I cannot speak for them. But as long as you are under the sound of this reality's temple, I'm going to treat everybody with justice. That's why I came to the defense of the South because if we're going to talk, let us talk right. Let's, let's talk how it really is. Let's be just and let us be fair. Let us be equal. I'm not going to condemn people for something they did not do. So don't tell me that I said that you did something. I don't know you. I don't know what you're doing. But until you show me otherwise, then you're not doing that either. So I will respect the white abolitionists and anybody that tried to help black people in this struggle. But these, and let me make something very clear, these was a very, very few because slavery and Jim Crow and all these evils against black folks could not have been done without a majority participation, whether you like it or not. It's a majority participation, just like what's going on right now as I speak. And these who are in the majority call 
the ones that don't agree with them, Negro lovers. That's what you are. The abolitionist was a Negro lover, slave lover. That's what they were. Those who were in the civil rights movement that tried to get justice for their black citizens. Oh, they Negro lovers. That's how you feel about them. Any white person that will agree with Talik Ibn Ra and this Realities Temple Ministry, they Negro lovers. Because they stand and willing to accept the fact that the trial maker is white. But I'm white, but I want to show you I'm not like them by my actions. Unlike you who talk. You just talk. When I look on the news and I watch all these marches and vigils for our little brother Trayvon Martin. Where are the white people? Where are they? They say that they agree that it's a tragedy. What happened to little Trayvon Martin? But when you see, where's the white leadership? You don't see very few, again, the same thing. Very few white folks supported black people and fought for us to have justice back in the day is the same today. Y'all run your mouth. You talk a good game. And your talk don't mean nothing to me. And you don't like me because I don't care nothing about your smile. I don't care nothing about your handshake. Your actions speak louder than words. And I see no actions from you. Oh, join Occupy Wall Street. And many white people actually got upset because the black folks talking about they don't want to join and won't join Occupy Wall Street. Where are you? Where are you today? Here we are. The descendants of slaves born in America all over this country. We are gathering together, marching, singing, lighting candles for Trayvon. Where is the Occupy Wall Street people? I have not heard nothing from the Occupy Wall Street people on this issue at all. But then, turn around. Let us fight the New World Order. Join Occupy Wall Street. Where are you when we have issues that we have to deal with in all black communities? You know we're around. Very few. Because you have a slave master mentality. You have a pet owner mentality. When you talk, you think black folks are supposed to jump. Come on, Spot. Come on, Spot. Come on, Tali. Come on. I'm not your slave. I'm not your Negro. I'm not your Sunbo. I'm not your handkerchief head Negro. So your best bet is to Float, float on, cause ain't it's nothing happening here. Float on, float on. It's not happening. You cannot trick black folks today. You will always have a certain amount of your slaves. You can have them. You can have all your handkerchief head. House Negro Sambo. You can have them. They are not my brothers and sisters. If they side with you and want to be with you, float, float. They can float on. Float on. Man, I want to say something, but I can't. I told somebody I'm going to try to <laughs> try to keep the profanity kind of stuff down. So I will. Because I want my little sisters, my little brothers, I want them to be able to listen and learn 
from somebody who is not a slave. I'm not a house negro. I'm not a sambo. I'm your brother who is scared just like you. Who have been tricked just like you. But I am like the cartoon character Popeye. I done stood all I can stand. I can't stand no more. And if the only thing I can do is talk, then that's what I do. Some of y'all so scared you can't even talk. These old sambos and house negroes running around. They're not satisfied, so they go behind white folks' back saying some of the same things that I say. But they scary and they cowards. And you trust them. That makes you a fool. Because these sambos and house negroes, they don't like you. They just scared of you. And this sambo life, this house negro life, this life like a slave, it's the only life they know. I'm an American patriotic citizen. You are a slave. And they just have accepted they are slaves. I will never accept being a slave in no kind of shape or form. And I will not pass down this condition to our babies. I'll let them know and talk and let them know the reality of the situation that they're living in. This racist society does not love black people. Never have, never will. If you love, then show me some love. Instead of a jail cell. Instead of the dope house. Instead of the military where I get a bullet in my brain. For your benefit. Not for my benefit. For your benefit. Black folks have benefited nothing from all these wars we've been in. We've got nothing. Huh. Now, there are a big majority of white folks. You don't have no problem with believing that that George Zimmerman is the victim. Now I see a whole lot of that. Whole lot of y'all, these racist Caucasian people, they have no problem coming on TV and in the street. Oh, George Zimmerman, he's the victim. We 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 don't have the whole story. You don't need no whole story. It's very plain and clear. But when you're a house negro, when you're a pet, when you're a slave, your life, you exist just to benefit your slave master. And that's all these suckers doing. They want to make sure they are in a position to keep their masa smiling. And that's what all this is about. And they better stay with Masa because they don't come our way. They know what's up. I am not. And I refuse to be a slave for those who are unworthy. And, and matter of fact, there is no slave master worthy of being served. Worthy of owning somebody else's life. We'll never bow down to you. That's over. And that's what you fear. That's what you don't like. Always want to control and run somebody. Take your advice. I don't want your advice. I didn't ask you for your advice. I don't have to listen to you. You ain't my massa. Get that through your thick skull. You think that black folks are still your slaves. We don't have to listen to you. We don't have to take your advice or nothing. We try to tell you what to do. You don't give a damn about what black folks say or think. Unless you think. That these Negroes 
is scheming on you or you just nosy because we don't get you we won't let you get you let you involved in our affairs I don't want you involved in my affairs you don't invite everybody into your house I don't like everybody don't hate I don't like everybody you just don't invite everybody into your house you just don't let everybody and anybody into your bedroom even your children there's places where some folks just don't go this is the black family this is the time especially during this tragic time with Trayvon Martin that we should come together and iron out our difference and come together as a unit, as a family. That's what we're working on. And you have always been in the background trying to destroy the family, destroy our alliance, because you think black love will interfere with this slave condition that you got us all hooked on. And then it will mess up your joy, your way of life. Your way of life, this slave-master relationship is coming to an end in America and around the earth. All exploitation, all oppression of human beings is coming to an end. It has to. The change is coming. And Obama could have helped bring some of it, but he's a puppet and he refused to do anything except obey his massa. Now we want to go ahead and 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 get a little bit more into the topic matter. But above all, just remember, respect us, just like we respect you. Respect our intelligence, our wisdom, our experience. And you will get the same thing back. But we don't need you. Never have needed, needed you. You never have been with us. So why should things change? Unless you show. Unless you show change. We don't have to show anything. We're the ones that get into this relationship with you and get our feelings hurt. 